Hello guys and welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. My name's Todd. Sorry, and when I'm on the phone, sometimes I speak so fast people don't get my name, and so I like to put my name out there. My name is Todd. Sorry, kind of cleaning up some mess here. It is Monday morning. Uh, so back to work we go after taking a day off yesterday. Well, kinda. I did I did repair one amp yesterday on a Sunday because I was bored. Uh, but back to business today. Uh, we have a tar amps here, and I just want to take you through my process of doing a warranty repair check. Uh, this is just what I do every day um, when an amplifier comes in. This came in uh, as a warranty repair request. So I figured I'd just bring you guys along with me on how I do my business here at Ellensburg Amplifier. So you have to excuse me because my camera is backwards from what I'm seeing here and how it's laid out. So let's get this amplifier out of here and uh, see what we're working with. I like it when customers, you know, do their best to pack their amps. I mean, I, I highly appreciate customers that do that. Because uh, these amps, if they're not packaged properly, you're going to destroy these plastic ends. I do carry plastic ends for replacements. Oh, look, he even gave me some extra stuff here. Some cables and a clip light. Nice. Which I don't need. Ooh, and I can tell you, I can tell you right off the bat that the power supply, this is burn up. Are we going to take a guess? Go by the smell. Uh, you just cannot... You can't forget the smell of a burnt circuit board. Dust. Dust? Oh, fire extinguisher. Oh, that's what's all over this. This... Got hit with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, yeah, that's what's all over this. Well, at least they took the proper steps at... Uh, oh, my. Yeah, they took the proper steps, you know, uh, not burning down their vehicle. Oh, it's all piled up. Uh, give me two seconds, guys. I'm going to uh, get the garbage can here, and I'm going to get rid of this... Uh, Fire extinguisher powder. Oh, yeah, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Wow. Which I don't mind. I mean, I appreciate people that, you know, take safety first. It's I don't know if I can save this guy's sticker for the top, but I will do my best. There we go. <laughs> All right, we have here a Taram Space 8K. Obviously, as you can see, that has had a significant failure. We can tell just by the smell. Um, so. What I need to do is verify that the, there's no external shorts, no issues on the terminals, on the, can we see up in there? No arcs, no arcs, no arcs to the case, no arcs to the case. Was the amplifier mounted? Good question. That is one thing I look for is was the amplifier secured down? I really can't tell. Uh, probably when they did the install on this. Unless they mounted it in a way that they didn't use the feet. 
the paint on the mounting holes doesn't even have a scratch on so let me check the speaker terminal make sure there's no external visible shorts which there isn't so so far i'm not seeing an issue when it comes to uh installation moving around in a trunk or something and a cable shorts out to the case that would be an end user obvious failure so we're going to go ahead and pull the cover on this. I've seen this a million times, not a million times. I mean, I haven't, I haven't had a million amps in, but there's, if there's one thing that's common to, um, probably the 8k, um, early 8ks, like the EX boards, uh, had notorious power supply failures uh, for some reason they would just I would get them in and the, the power supplies would just be burnt to a crisp to a point where I couldn't service it I'm pretty good with trace repair but I have to weigh what I'm getting paid uh, to do the job uh, versus what damage is present Yeah, fire extinguisher powder everywhere, which is good. I'm glad he. Uh, I'm glad he hit it with a fire extinguisher, which tells me that this is going to be in bad shape. Um, hopefully my volume is coming through. Okay, I noticed on a couple of last recordings my volume is not as high as it used to be. Boy. Oh yeah. White fingers. Mmm, smell that power supply. We're just gonna rip this thing right off of here. Oh uh, yeah. You say hi. <laughs> yeah. Well, good for him for uh, hitting it with a fire extinguisher. And this is typical. This is typical. This is a failed power supply. It's going to be the uh, 180Ns on the power supply. Oh, this really just makes my skin feel funny. Uh, we call this a mess. Um, I know right off the bat I got to replace a power supply. Um, it didn't burn up near as bad as some of the other 8K boards that I have seen burn up. Uh, this is what I call fully repairable may not look like to you guys but this is repairable when it's not repairable is when I can take my tweezers reach down where the transistors burn up and if you can put a hole through that board nah it's not worth saving um, I can but it, down the road it could pose problems if a trace comes loose or a vibration uh, but if you can put your tweezers through the board, um, I call that not economical to repair. But this one here, when it burned up, it didn't burn up bad. But the black is just the soot you see from the transistors cooking. So from here, we're going to flip her over. Oh, look at that. I love, I love making findings on amplifiers because check this out. Let me bring you guys in. Whoa, let's just get right down on this thing here. Boom. Look at that. Poof. So that is the driver for the power supply. This is an 8K. Uh, yeah, you know what? I, I would rather see the two in, individual drivers, kind of like on the Smart 5. Uh, I haven't had a Smart 8 in yet for repair to, to know how it's designed, but it's probably similar to the EX board. But when you have two drivers in the middle to drive your power supply, in my opinion, is a lot more efficient than trying to drive this whole power supply off of one IC. Because when there's a failure, this one IC here, if you have a good enough short here, you're going to take this uh, MCU out. So that is a huge problem. When you have a power supply failure, you can do enough damage back here 
to damage your MCU. And if that MCU is damaged, it's game over. Uh, for the average person, you may or may not be able to contact Tar Amps for a new MCU. Um, I can get them. Without really any issues. Um, but I don't know, you know, how uh, they deal with, you know, just the private individual. Well, I'm private too. Uh, asking for parts. Oh, wow. Boy, and the more I look at the uh, preamp section over here, there's a resistor here that's blown in half. It's still on the on the pads. It's blown in half and pushed apart. So there is a huge surge current going through that. Enough to heat the solder up, lead-free, mind you, so it is has a higher melting point, and it blew the resistor in half. This one's going to be a little tougher to diagnose because I really can't fire it up, obviously, because I'm missing a bunch of stuff here. So, and I hate, <laughs> what's today? Today is the 11th. I don't know if I have, I think the 10th is my deadline for ordering parts uh, from Brazil. Ah, oh, man, but this may have been the power, the resistor to provide power from the auxiliary circuit to the drive IC. We're going to keep our fingers crossed for that. Um, but what I do is I just go through, I cut all the transistors loose. See... So don't worry about, you know, anything right now besides clearing the fault. You want to clear the fault because our primary goal right now is to see if the MCU is alive or not. I'm going to have to start my scope here. But if we cut these tra power supply transistors out, we can actually start up the uh, amplifier. It'll run through a cycle just briefly uh, until it realizes there's no rail voltage. But this will allow us to uh, see if the MCU has any output to the power supply. And the way to know if you have cleared your short is to check. Check your power supply. If you see it climb, then you know you have yourself an open power supply. Good. So we're climbing here just like I would expect to see to charge the 12-volt uh, filter capacitors. So I have cleared the short on the power supply. I need to pull the IC that drives the power supply. Oof. Bad shape, bad shape. Let's get some flux on that thing. Make just a little bit of a flux mess here. I have Q-tips. We'll just clean it right back up. That's if I save this board. I think it welded itself right to it. Let me get myself a little heat sink here. What I do is I just use a sh straight uh, a, sh a straight razor blade there. So I don't cook that capacitor. I'm trying to get this IC out of here. Oh, and it's coming apart in pieces. Ah... Uh, uh, yeah, not good. Not good. Yeah, that IC. Oh, it came apart, but it took all the traces with it. This is probably going to be a new board. Yep. 
because all those traces are gone. Yeah, all right. So in that case, as long as my short is open, I'm going to pull... Boy, it's a mess. I think I can power up the... Uh... I might be able to power this up. Uh, too many shorts. Shall we find out? Let's find out. Simple little uh, little 10 amp power supply that I got going on down there. I don't see any smoke coming off of the uh, preamp board. Let's just see how uh, not alive this amplifier is. Oh, hey, we have a blue light. <laughs> All right. Even though I think this board needs to be replaced, I am going to see if the MCU is still alive, which is really easy. I just check right over here at the resistors. These are pull-down resistors for the MCU for the power supply drive. So far, it's not looking good. <laughs> yeah, there is nothing. This, this MCU is gone, or the power supply is gone. Uh, what a mess. So there's... Yeah kind of had a feeling this MCU would it's either going to have a short to ground here but it doesn't matter because these traces are gone uh, so I am going to call for a new board on this uh, because reliability is key reliability for on a repair and uh, could I repair this and say it's 100% reliable? Um, probably not. I would have to say I would pass on the reliability. Even if you could get these traces put together. Uh, with that IC being literally welded to the board. Yeah. We're going to call for a new board. So that is the basic just general rundown. I get it when I get an amplifier in. I do all my checks on it. Uh, see where I stand with the board. Either repair the board, replace the board. Those are my options. And on this one, I think I'm going to replace. Oh. Oh. Oh, and on top of that, this little sticker was hiding something from me. Oh, what do we see here? What do we see right there? Look at that. Blown output section. Blown trace. Yeah, it took out the trace. So, yeah, there is so much work that is involved on this uh, that I'm just going to call for a new board. So, I do thank you guys for watching. Uh, just a general overview, a review of uh, either approve or decline a warranty. That's how I do it. Um, if you have any questions, comments or anything leave them down below and i'll get to you as soon as i can and again guys please uh, stay safe keep your fingers out of the rails these things can get pretty high in rail voltage again if you just look at your rail capacitors these are 160 volt rail capacitors so you could be in the 120 ish 130 ish volts dc on the rectifiers and the output transistors i see guys when they fire these things up run their hands across the output transistors like wow you, you find yourself 
touching those outputs that have high voltage and touching ground, you may have a problem. So stay safe, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.